Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Namaskar, I am Mahesh Chandar, Principal Scientist at ICR Indian Veterinary Research Ijatnagar UP. Then I, I will be talking today about Organic Agriculture Global and Indian Scenario. So you might be interested in Organic Agriculture, how it is progressing in worldwide. If you look at the growth, it is having tremendous growth and it is expanding so like in a very big way. If you look at the data. So the, some countries are, are much ahead, especially in Europe, Australia and America and some countries in developing countries are still catching up with the developments elsewhere in the world. India is one of the leading country among the organic producers in terms of number of organic producers we are having as per the statistics available till 2021. So we were having 1.6 million certified organic producers. These are not those producers which by default are organic but they are registered certified organic producers 1.6. There might be many more which are not as yet registered. So in terms of the land Australia is number one country followed by Argentina and the other, other countries in the world. So they are doing very well in organic. So most of the uh, development related to organic agriculture are concentrated in developed countries in, in Europe, in America, Americas and in Australia and many other countries in African continent and then India is also one of the leading countries. So if you look at there is 3.7 million organic farmers worldwide and then there is growth and then this world market is uh, the world market is also uh, going up very rapidly. There are 76.4 million hectare land in 190 countries. Uh, in 190 countries, organic production uh, and organic farming is being taken up by the farmers. There are over 3.7 million organic uh, producers worldwide. And then 124.8 billion euro global market for organic product. If you look at this uh, global market, it is expanding. It is increasing year after year and also the number of producers and number of area under organic cultivation is growing up internationally in every country it is going up. So, so if you look at India, India is considered as one of the success story in, uh, in case of organic. So how it is success story? India ranks fourth in terms of world organic agriculture land. This is 2.66 million hectares and first in terms of total number of producers that is 1.6 million. This is as per our firm feeble document uh, to 2021. This figure must have further gone up in the, up to last year. As per the latest economic survey of government 2020-23, India has further demonstrated significant progress wherein 4.43 million, 4.43 million organic farmers are there and about 5.9 million hectare area has been brought under organic farming by 2021-22. These are the figures of Ministry of Agriculture and Farmers Welfare. So India produced 3,43,735 metric tons of organic products. These included farm and wild harvest out of which 4,60,320.40 metric tons valued at around 771.96 million was exported during 2021-22 to 63 countries. You can imagine that we are producing huge amount of organic product and mostly these certified organic products are meant for export. So you can yourself understand that how big market is coming up for the organic products. So it is we are exporting to 63 countries. That itself is speak the kind of progress organic farm, organic uh, farming is making in India. Organic markets in domestic and export is growing at a CAGR of 28% and 23.35%. Startups and farmers are eager to venture into organic production. More and more number of farmers are switching over to organic farming and especially among the youth there is a big craze for organic farming. 
they are coming up in organic dairying also and then many startups are now applying for the grants so that they can switch over new farm because in the conventional agriculture they find that it is not so glamorous it is not so lucrative or organic looks very glamorous very attractive option to switch over from the conventional practice to organic farming and the youth are also those which are uh, in the software oriented and then they are mobile oriented and then tech oriented they are finding it very convenient to switch over and they like it and that is why they are applying for the grants under many startup schemes and they are coming forward for taking up organic agriculture as a venture. So organic food products export grew by 51 percent to US 10 point uh, 1040 million in 2021. You, that also indicate that how significantly we are progressing year, year after year. So that was then double the growth. The, it means that it was so it was just doubled in just one year 1040 million dollars in 2020-21 so now not only organic cereal products fruit and vegetables in spices and nuts so india is also ex is, has also ex started exporting uh, kind of a animal products also just say for example 2020 to 125 kg certified clarified butter was exported to uae in 2019 and 20 now more number of the dairy producers private dairies they are exporting so organic certified cheese butter oil to the countries in the gulf so you we see that if you want to improve our export portfolio organic animal organ, organic animal husbandry including all organic production has good prospects and then there is a huge export demand from the many countries especially in the developed countries they find they they are importing a lot of organic material uh, material say in, from india tea, coffee, cotton, basmati rice, so that is going and also the lot of lot many other products are being exported from India now and then the Ministry of Commerce and Industry are increasing, uh, increasingly getting orders for export orders to meet the requirement under the National Program on Organic Production and POP, several schemes and Government of India has announced several schemes to promote organic production so that for the not only for the domestic consumers but we can improve our exports also. For the, for the reason primarily, if, if you can look at this kind of a scenario, you can see in, in many shopping malls, not only in the western countries, now in India also, lot of organic materials, products, food products are stuffed in the big shopping malls in the metros. Slowly, slowly that will expand to the smaller towns and then there is a big, big uh, demand for the organic products in the domestic market itself. So, so looking at this domestic demand, and also the export uh, export market so we need to be prepared you see the here all the uh, day even the dairy products dairy products egg meat chicken and all these things in the western countries the development what what are happening in the western countries so sooner or later they are also happening in developing countries like india so what we see that so many indian products for example this one is a ghee clarified butter I saw this in, in the German uh, superstore. So they had kept this one bio ghee and all. So it, it matters that how you are labeling the product, how you are packaging the product. So not only production is important, if you are export, so we have to have export orientation. We have to follow the good production practices. So and, and then we have to also have developed the habit of making the documents prepared for export requirements of audit and all that is good agriculture practices need documentation and then we have to see the importers they want they would like to see that the kind of the production we are making if any chemical is being used and if there is an kind kind of unfair treatment is being meted out to the laborers or child labor is used or not these are also the requirements sometimes we feel that it is agriculture production we can go the way whatever we want we can do it but no organic production is highly specialized area it is skill oriented it is knowledge based so we have a knowledge of the production standards how we can grow it so then only that stuff will go into the market otherwise it will not be able to sell the products into the market 
So, you, you look at the, the kind of the uh, packaging and uh, how it has been processed and kept. So, these exporters now earlier if you look at our conventionally we are keeping this butter oil, this ghee into large containers, but now not many people are consuming in the big quantities, they need in smaller quantities. So, the marketeers, those uh, the marketeers, those who are the exporters or those who are the retailers, they know the requirement of the consumers. The retailers the way they know the requirements of the consumers, farmers will also be aware or need to be aware, made aware of the requirements of the consumers, so that they not only produce, but they process and pack also, so that they can also directly sell to the consumers. So, this is what the growing, if you look at the progress, slowly, slowly farmers are also trying to meet the requirements at the level of consumers not only they are producing and selling to the intermediaries, but they, they, they market for the direct uh, to sale of the product is also coming up. And also say for example, earlier milk was not kept in the tetra pack, now it is being uh, kept uh, for some more days in the tetra pack saving. So, you see the kind of the packaging for the meat products. So, the farmers and then how these are packaged, capped and ready for the consumers. We have to attract the consumers, so that they, they buy by the product. Sometimes the farmers they do not know this one. And also you look at increasingly wherever you go, the kind of the products is what they kept into. So, lot many producers and then when you look at these products, there will be information about who has produced that product, where from it has come, how and the who has processed it and then marketing and who has certified this product. So, where, what we call traceability. Traceability is strictly followed in case of the organic production and marketing of the food food stuffs. So here, then with the farmers, information related to farmer will be available, and the processors will be available, and then the marketing so where it is being made, then who has certified it. So if we are not compliant with these kind of the requirements, we will not be able to sell the product in the market. So we have to see that how nicely if we want to compete globally. So, we have to follow the global standards for the organic products. They are the global standards. So, Indian standards are also uh, under NPOP are aligned with the European standards. So, so that, so we are able to export to the European countries. So, whatever standards Euro European Union follows for the organic products. So, we try to align with their standards and our standards are also similar to the European standards. So, that so, if they are buying any food stuff from us, so we, they should see that our standards are similar to their standards. And then the farmers need to be made aware about the organic production standards. If they are not aware, they will lag behind in exporting the products to these countries. So, now if you look at the kind of the uh, organic livestock production. So, when I saw this in the Germany, these you the pigs have been given the freedom to move anywhere they can move that freely that freedom. So, stress free life they are having and they also goats. We do also have similar kind of a goat production in India. So, goats browse like that, they go up to trees and all. So, that are lot of them. They are not been put into inside a house for a longer period of time. They do have opportunity to come out and then, then uh, feed themselves from the trees because they are the browser, they browse and they, 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 they like this way of eating. So, so you can see the, the kind of the freedoms the animal are enjoying. So, not only organic crop based product, nuts and fruits and vegetables, so organic livestock product are also emerging into the market. And they, because this is happening because of the growing consumer interest in good quality food products. Earlier, you, if you remember that earlier days people would not look into the food labels. Now, slowly, slowly they have started reading the levels of the, in the food products. So, packaging they read it, the date of manufacture, expiry date and all this kind of thing. Earlier we are not. As the income is going up, educational level is going up, people are becoming more aware because of the media and all these things. So, aware population they are going uh, for that kind of a uh, informed decision they are taking about the food stuff they are going to eat. So, they have become more quality conscious. They are also ready to pay for willing to pay more for the good quality products. So, also it is not only the developed country, also in the developing country market for the organic product is slowly, slowly coming up. 
earlier it was mostly for the export purpose now our organic products are also being consumed in the domestic market in developing countries like india so domestic market is in domestic market development is the key we cannot sustain only on exporting the organic product so we have to make efforts for the development of the domestic market initially some people hesitated buying organic product because of their higher prices premium prices generally 25 to 30% or up to 50% the prices are higher in comparison to conventional product but the domestic format if we want to develop so we have to look into bring down the prices of the organic products this will happen when more number of the producers will come up and we will have the production technologies which reduces the cost of production of organic production so right now it is because we are not using chemical fertilizer that lowers yield initially uh, so something and just to compensate this low low yield we have to we have to keep the prices a little bit higher but now domestic if you want to develop the domestic market now also the government has come up with a scheme like participatory guarantee system of certification that kind of certified organic products are eligible to be marketed in domestic market that gives also good opportunity for boosting the uh, uh, production in the domestic market so now apart from the crop based product and fruit and nuts and spices the animal product as i said earlier that also they are uh, slowly slowly they are uh, making their presence felt in the market now branded certified organic uh, dairy products are available in market so you you can look into here that several items are available here in the market so uh, these several companies now they are producing organic animal products like ghee butter cheese milk powder and this uh, the, uh, then eggs also these are available slowly slowly these are available in the domestic market and consumers like it to because they feel that it it gives them the confidence that there will be good quality organic is generally considered as synonymous with a good quality that uh, that is that is the reason that uh, the market for the uh, organic products is expanding globally it is increasing so that the, the quality is the prime con consideration that people go for this kind of uh, uh, products so in the western countries i saw in italy this this kind of uh, this this is cheese and then two year old cheese and this particular farmer was hap was having 250 holistian fusion cows and then he was producing cheese and that was certified cheese for export to other european countries so and then in the in the western countries many a time the farmers they have their own shops to sell they don't use intermediaries or middlemen in between just to push their product they sell directly to the consumers this kind of a marketing system is also emerging in several developing country where the farmer are uh, are also trying to be retailers also of the products so they 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 sell it so many organic farmers they want to sell just to increase improve their income portfolio they are directly trying to market the consumers because sometime they do have a buyback arrangement wherein they negotiate with the consumers or the group of consumers that will supply you this much quantity of the organic produce on the yearly basis at this particular price this at then they supply to the their con dedicated consumers in case of organic farming this kind of a uh, market chain is uh, well established now then there are identified consumers who regularly buy organic products this kind of arrangement will be further uh, further develop when that will lead to the expanded market for the organic products so likewise the what is what is happening in the developed countries so that is also uh, slowly slowly happening in india or other developing country so india has just begun making some progress in organic animal production with limited quantity as i told previously 2125.6 kg of clarified butter exported to the uae during 1920 then now afterwards 55 ton organic paneer cheese was exported recently in addition to the slowly growing domestic market you see this figure why i am giving this figure to you here just to indicate that there is a promising market for organic livestock products as well so earlier we used to think that livestock products is very difficult to export but there is opportunities there 
So, only we have to meet the requirements of the export of the livestock products. In many developed countries, we are not able to export our livestock product even which are conventionally produced because of the certain restrictions. Say for example, certain diseases exist and many countries, many developed countries where these diseases do not uh, are not there, they do not buy Indian livestock product. So, we have to focus our attention on elimination of this disease uh, uh, from this country. So, we have to eradicate these diseases from our country, so that we can improve our prospects of exporting to the developed country livestock product. In case of organic products, so we could export it to some Gulf countries. And, and then you see this, it is a certified operation. Now, there are uh, as I told uh, that uh, as I would say that there are certification agencies. Now, they are also improving their capacity to certify livestock products as well. There are 52 certified organic dairy operators in India, 66 meat operators and 3 certified organic ag operators in India. You might be thinking these are very small number given the huge human population we have in India, huge livestock population we have and looking at these huge livestock and human population, then there are only 52 certified organic operators, 66 meat operator and just 3 uh, organic ag operators. That, that I am saying that it is just a beginning. So, that number will go and then it will go very high when the export we will be able to export to many more countries. So, we are simply trying to make arrangement, uh, we, are make, we are trying to make arrangement then how we can improve our export portfolio, so that we can more number of people come into organic production of livestock project products as well. Now, another issue sometimes people wonder whether these organic products are nutritious or are in better taste. But I would say that it is not well proven that organic products are nutritious. There is no evidence, clear cut evidence available that these are nutritious. Or, but some people say that they are in better taste, that they taste better. So, that happens when sometime if you have consumed some local product from the local market where vegetable traditionally grown. So, some people have some kind of a taste bud and they have a liking for this kind of product. They may say that they are a better taste, but whatever it is, whether, whether they are nutritious or not, whether they are better tasting or not, but the one thing is very certain that the market for this organic product is going up everywhere in the, in the world. More and, consume, more and more consumers are getting attracted with the organic products levels. So, you see that how catchy the So, sometimes they are must, uh, in the western countries I have seen that they sometimes they will segment the market like grass fed milk, grass fed meat. So, antibiotic free milk, these are the they are branding their product like that. So, that attracts the attention of the consumers when you say it is antibiotic free or residue free. So, and then sometimes they will leave it 100 percent organic. So, that attracts the attention of the consumers and when it is a grass fed, sometimes it is well proven fact those who work in the animal meat industry or meat industry. So, they, 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 they know it grass fed animals wheat is considered good and the consu many consumers like it. So, the marketers what they, they come up with the idea they will label their product like that 100 percent grass fed. And also people generally they avoid antibiotics and they feel that antibiotics are not good for human health. So, they feel it is better they feel they develop a good feeling for those product which claim that they are antibiotic free. So, but the antibiotics are you know in organic production antibiotics are very much restricted they are not so allowed. So, they are not they, they are, there is not such uh, freedom for the use of antibiotic there are certain restrictions and in certain uh, standards say for example, American standard what we call NOP national organic program standard they do not allow at all uh, antibiotics use in animal production. So, European standard allow and Indian standard allow with certain restriction that how much it is there. So, whatever it is there the moment you claim that it is antibiotic and uh, residue free that uh, that improves the prospects of the for this one. So, what is happening? So, so many not only private dairy companies are coming in organic production, but the uh, co dairy cooperatives are also coming forward for, to follow the organic practices in the milk production. So, say for example, this one is Sundarani products. So, Sundarani is a dairy cooperative in West Bengal. 
it is supported by national dairy, national dairy development board and the, uh, the production milk production and milk products uh, are certified by the Rajasthan Organic Certification Agency. And this is the Dairy Cooperative of West Bengal uh, Dairy Cooperative Federation and then it is supported by National Dairy Development Board in switching over from conventional uh, dairy production to the organic dairy production. So, this is one very good example where so many organic products or uh, especially milk products say uh, including the sweets these are available. So, looking at the success of this particular cooperative many more cooperatives may come forward in India because almost every state is having dairy, co uh, dairy cooperative federation. They, they may think of that, they, they may think of emulating this good example and successful example that wherein the dairy has been and this is all many women dairy farmers are uh, joined hand and they are engaged in this kind of a organic production. So, many women based self group, uh, self help groups or farmer producer organization can take up organic farming collectively and then they can then if they are doing it collectively rather than individually doing this they will be more they will meet more success. It is assumed that if they are doing in a uh, cooperative manner and coming together joining hands together because individual farmers they have a small amount of milk produced, a small volume is there. So, when a small volume is there processing become difficult. So, they are not able to process it and then also packaging facilities and other facilities are not there and then they, they, they find it very difficult to that uh, market that products. So, they if they are coming together, so they can they can be better organic producer and market uh, and marketing will be easier. Now, side by side in alongside the organic production, we are also talking of natural natural farming. So, natural farming the in natural farming cow based it is mostly cow based. In case of organic production, it is not necessary that you will have animals in the farm. It can be growing, you can be growing as an organic farmer only a, a, some crops. Of course, the farm has to be diversified, but it does not mean that in organic farm animal has to be there. But in case of natural farmer, keeping cow is very important in natural farming wherein so the cow's product can be products can be made and cow supplements so, uh, inputs for the for the crops we are growing. So, we, uh, we, we make bija met, jiva met, we are making in uh, natural farming, but also cow base many uh, products are being uh, sold in market. So, so, when in case of organic production, we are not only looking, looking for the only uh, primary product. Say for example, if dairy animals are there, we are not only looking for the milk only. So, several products can be made of uh, made up of uh, this uh, cow product say cow dung. So, from the cow dung several products can be made. So, you can you, you can look into and these uh, these uh, products are increasing in number. So, many more products are being uh, uh, produced from the cow, from the cow dung. So, we if you want to see the organic farming is succeeding that we have to see that how many products we can make out of it not only the milk and also the milk can be sold as a raw milk, but not only as a raw milk, but we can make multitude of product out of the milk. So, lassi we can make and many 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 others say curd can be make buttermilk. So, many products whatever market is available and we can sell it in that form whatever consumers like we can we can think in this term. So, we have to see if we want to maximize our profit. So, we have to look into looking at the pro, uh, prospects of the organic farming many progressive farmers are wishing to go organic here it is very important we have to think global we have to act local and we have to, to see the demand coming from the local farmers in india so how how they can switch over to organic uh, organic dairy farming or organic poultry farming, how they can go. So, we have to provide them know how, so that they can get good market for their organic products into market. So, many farmers now approaching to the institutions, agriculture research institutions, agriculture development organizations to NGOs seeking know how on organic production, how to go about organic production. So, they need to be told how they can go about, how they can progress, how they can develop their organic dairy farm or poultry farm and how they can access the market. So, market is slowly developing and it depends on how rapidly 
we prepare our farmers. Say for example, if farmer is approaching me or you that he want to go organic and he want to switch over to organic dairy farming or poultry farming, the extension service providers or those people responsible for agriculture development and or the extension functionaries, they should be knowing the standards about so how to go organic, how to do organic farming. Many a time I have seen many extension providers, service providers, they say when the farmer is asking how to do organic farming, they tell it is not good, do not do it. Since they do not know it and they tell the farmers do not do it, it is not good. Extension service provider is supposed to tell the farmer what he is asking. He is basically not asking whether to do it or not. Suppose a farmer has realized that there is a profit in switching over to organic farming, he want to do it, we are supposed to tell him how to do it. That how to part is very important, capacity need to be built up of the extension providers first because they are responsible for training the farmers and then those others interested in organic farming. So, right now we most of the extension service providers, they are trained traditionally on conventional farming or that is chemical oriented farming. Since green revolution days, we have been teaching farmers how much chemical fertilizers to be used, what pesticide and how to use that pesticide and when to irrigate the farm and what we decide to be used or chemical oriented techniques, package of practices, extension service providers are know very well. But now slowly looking at the growth in organic sector, the extension service provider need to improve their capacities. How so that they can pass on the information and they can train the farmers that they can switch over to organic system of production. If you look at the western market, the extension service providers, there are exclusive extension service services available, especially being provided by the certification agencies. Though by the product, they provide know-how to the farmers and the farmers according to the standard they produce and the service provide these uh, certification agencies, then they also help them the market the product. They are some people those who are specialized in exporting organic products only. They are have looking at the growing huge market for the organic products. So, these people are, they, they take care, they keep the technical know-how to their farmers, those who are producing, they are helping to, to produce in the right way. So, this is, this is the way we should not. So, in the western countries, so in, in the USA, Australia, Europe and many other countries, so organic production is going up in a very big way and there is a huge market coming up and then, then it, it is coming in a very many different variants. Some biodynamic farmers are there, so now agro, uh, ecological products market is coming up these and some organic products. So, now slowly in India also government is pushing forward the natural farming and the products of the natural farming will also come up in the market. So, all these kind of a specialized, uh, specialized products, they need a specialized skill. So, we have to skill our farmers in this area. So, so, so that we can and we if we are looking at the export growth, there is potential for even organic feed export not only the organic edible food products for the human consumption, there is also huge market for exporting. So, feeds and for the feed, even soybean is exported in lot of, lot, lot much of quantity of soybean, it is exported as a animal feed, animal feed for the certified organic operations in, in the western countries. So, likewise guar gum is another uh, feed product, animal feed product which can be exported. So, we have to see that if conventional production is not giving enough income to the farmers, we have to, we are responsible for increasing the farmers income. So, if we see that organic production can enhance their profit, so we have to concentrate on this system of production. Though there is no restriction, there is no one is pushing anyone to go organic for organic production or natural farming. Only an alternative is being provided including by the government that these are other options and because government has also looking that to reduce cost of cultivation. Cost of cultivation can be substantially reduced if we follow natural farming and organic farming methods because chemicals are not used. Chemicals, chemical use whether it is pesticide or fertilizers, they are very expensive. Instead of using expensive fertilizers, if we can make our own 
fertilizer and all the whatever is available our own farm that is recycled into the farm. So, that will that will lead to the reduction in the cost of cultivation because we are not buying products from the uh, market and we are not dependent on the uh, market purchase inputs we are producing on farm itself. So, we have to also learn we have to also the pass on the information and uh, the skill to the farmers that how they can have own their uh, how they can produce their own input on their farms whatever is available that is especially in case of natural farming that natural farming whatever is farm that is recycled compost making if there are waste material so it, it may be kitchen waste may be some kind of a leaves and other can that can be turned into compost so we have to provide so these kind of the uh, farmers who are coming for know how and then those who want to know suppose sometime it's a big problem they want to know where is the market available for the organic products, where they can sell it. Sometime it happens the farmer has produced organic products and he is not getting the market. That market information is also very important to for the farmers that they can, where they can sell, what kind of the product they can sell. Not for every product there is market available. So, there are certain category of uh, food products. So, or, or other uh, products in even textile for the for the cotton and all these kind of things. So, that is a lot of market in Europe and other developed countries. So, we have to guide the farmer under his conditions, under his socioeconomic conditions, what he can grow and what he can grow to, to find out the right market. This is the job of the extension service provider that they should tell guide the farm farmers rightly. Many farmers you know because of the uh, lack of literacy, lack of education, they are not able to follow the standards properly. They need proper guidance and because more than 80 percent of the farmers in India are very small scale, their capacities are very limited. So, we have to tell them how they can get together, how they can form the farmer producer organization, FPOs, because government has target of have, uh, having 10,000 farmer producer organization to raise FPOs 10,000 that many departments have been given target to form the FPOs because FPO when it is there, there will be organized group of farmers, they will be able to negotiate better for the market, better market for their products and also the, all the know-how can be pro uh, arranged for the farmers so that they can go for the kind of production they are going for. Otherwise, so long they are is, uh, a small scale. So, they, they find it very difficult to purchase the right inputs at the right time and also the, they are not able to mechanize their farm to go for good uh, cultivation practices. So, if FPOs are made, this is also associated with the uh, organic production because a small unless we go for the cluster basis or a kind of a group for farming basis, uh, this to see the success of organic production is very limited. In the western countries, there are large farms, they are the huge farms, it, it is easier for them to convert or switch over to organic production. Unlike in the western countries where there are large farms, our farmers are very small scale and very small scale farmers, unless they get together and form the clusters, they cannot be successful in organic farming. Though we know that organic farmers, organic food products are being contributed in a huge quantity still in India, it, it is sourced from the small scale farmers also. But these small scale farmers are the organic farmers by default because they cannot afford buying chemical fertilizers, pesticides, weedicides and they are managing, they are going for mechanical weeding for example, because they have this family laborer is available, they go for the manual weeding, they do not use weedicides. So, sometimes they manage by using their local practices to control the pests, but if they can be put into made into a group, organized group, they can do better way and then they will be more successful in organic organic farming including organic livestock production. Say for example, if an entire village they think of making organic milk collection. If they are already organic farmers certified as an organic unit, they can they can go for organic kind of organic milk production and organic they can make organic milk products because they can pool up their products together. So, this is how they can develop organic market for themselves. So, this I mean to say that you we have to study the global situation. So, what is there and how things are progressing worldwide. So, how India is how India can do it. So, now looking at this picture. So, if this is this is a big farmer. 
this was a big farmer which I saw in Italy. He was having 250 uh, cattle heads and then high, uh, high yielder animal, Holstein fusion, you know, it is a cow breed. So, European cow breed which gives more, more milk. So, then he was having this much number. Right? Indian small scale uh, farmers cannot manage this large size European cattle breeds. So, if, they, if, if it is in the form of a group and all the resources are available, they can have it, otherwise it is very difficult. So, now how we have to save, synthesize this information. So, how the western country producers are going producing organic food products for the consumers, which consumers are demanding, how developing country, can, country producers can prepare themselves for the local uh, keeping in mind the global scenario. So, not only the, as I told previously, organic products are not only to be consumed by the uh, by the consumers abroad, but are the domestic consumers are also asking for the organic products. You might have seen, for example, you take the case of milk. Milk is available in the market for 40 rupees a kg and also it is being sold up to 120 rupees per liter per kg. So, it means, it means what? People are willing to pay that extra money. So, then 120 kg who is feeling that, they will, it means that that assures them the quality. So, people are uh, looking for the good quality in the product, not necessarily organic, but they are looking for the good quality in the product and they are ready to pay for that one. Either income is rising and they are, their affordability is going up, they are ready to pay for the good quality food st stuff because they know if they consume good quality food stuff, their health problems will be less. So, keeping in this mind, they pay extra money and for that one and the farmers can cash upon this opportunity by supplying to the consumers good quality food products. So, if you are able to help farmers in this, that will be the great success of the extension services that we are able to help our farmers. So, if you are not able to help our farmers, it is not the success of the extension services or the government agencies responsible for agricultural production. Uh, so, uh, good agricultural production. So, say for example, all the state agricultural universities, uh, ICR research organization, Krishi Vigyan Kendra and the private sector organization who are involved in agriculture development and then who, those who are procuring agriculture raw materials, they are trying to help the farmers, all they are responsible for teaching good agriculture practices, good, good livestock production practices and also they can orient to export orientation. We have seen that efforts on export orientation of farmers are not that much as much it should be because now we are almost food secure, food security is there, we are, we are having self-sufficiency in food production. Now, we should, we should switch over from the quantity to the quality. So, because now we, we need to switch over from quantity, high quantity, more production to the quality full production. So, quality full, uh, quality full production will come only when we are able to educate our farmers on good agricultural practices, good livestock production practices. So, that is the job of the agencies responsible for agricultural extension services or animal husbandry extension services. So, we have to build the capacity of the agricultural extension service providers first on good agriculture practices and good livestock production practices and also organic production practices. So, right now at the, at the different, at the many different levels, awareness and the knowledge level of the extension service provider is not adequate enough on, or, uh, on the stand, production standards of the organic farming because now they have to be trained, they have to get trained themselves on the organic farming practices and also they need to be trained on export requirements because export requirement they are very extensive also and one has to keep. In case of organic products, so many a time our export consignments are being rejected by the importing countries because they do not meet the quality requirement, so the production requirement. So, we have to see that they, they, they need to improve their capacity on, so how good quality production can be taken from the farming. So, I, I, what I would say that look, look what is happening worldwide. Every year we have to follow the trade related magazine, agriculture trade magazines, then the, all the literature related to organic uh, farming, 
organic agriculture, organic livestock production, what is required by the different importing countries. So, we have to keep in mind the requirements of the importing countries with respect to organic products and then accordingly to their requirements to meet their requirement, we have to orient our production to the, we have to align our production to the level of standards or the level parameters or indicators what they have prescribed. So, if this is not meeting their requirement, we will lag behind in exporting our products. So, once I was, uh, I was in Guatemala, a farmer was, uh, a farmer was uh, getting certified his uh, rose, uh, rose farm through a certification agency. So, I asked him, why you are getting certified your rose farm? What is the need for you? Because you can grow conventionally rose and you can sell it. He told not, it is not like that when he is exporting his roses and the importing countries, they, they want certified roses. So, then the certified roses, if I am not having the roses certified by the certification agency, because I am following good agriculture practices and the certifying agency is certifying it, then only importing country will import this product. So, if I am not doing it, I will lag behind, I will not be able to export the product and I will miss the opportunity of gaining from the export market which is available for the roses. You see this example I am giving just because if we are not export exporting our product, we, we are missing the opportunity and we are why, why we are not able to export because we are not meeting the export standard. Export standard for the organic product that what we call organic quality. Organic quality is means that we have followed the process of organic production. Organic production is a process certification. It means that we comply with the standards of the organic production. So, we comply and the process has been fulfilled. It has been seen by the certification agency. We comply with the organic production practices. So, then only we will get certificate of compliance and we will be given compliance certificate. Then we will be eligible to market that product at certified organic product with the proper logos of the production, uh, the farmer. Uh, the information about the farmer and the logo of the government approval seal that is certification on the government of India for example, in case of NPOP certification in, in standards complied or the it will also have the logo of the certification bodies. So, we, we, we have a lot of work to do educate our, our farmers on organic production practices. So, if we are not doing our farmers will lag behind. We, we have to see that how the, uh, so quality is, it is not the final uh, product, but the every step in the production. In case of crops, right from the sowing, what seed we are sowing and how for we are fertilizing the soil. So, how we are uh, raising the crop and then what kind, how we are managing the weed in the crop. So, what kind of uh, intervention we are giving, what kind of bio fertilizer which we are using. So, every level there are standard and all the good agriculture products, production practices are followed up for the every, every respect. As, as we know that organic farming starts with the soil, soil has to be healthy, it should be well nourished and it should be fertilized well, so that it remains healthy and it should be, it should be able to provide sufficient nutrients for the plants to grow, healthier growth. So, how to do it? That part is very important and we have, we have to compete with the growing organic world market and we have to cast upon the opportunity of the good quality you know. We are number one, we are number one, we are maintaining that position for the last several years in terms of the number of certified organic producers because of the intervention of the government under several schemes. Government is, government policy is very much supportive about organic farming and natural farming and there are several schemes for that. So, we have to see that if it is there at every level and every official responsible for, extension agents responsible for, government and private institutions responsible for promoting and uh, de or developing uh, the organic sector, they have to be responsible and they have to improve the capacity of the producers. The producers are the farmers. We have to see that they are become, they are very skilled and then every country, developing country most of the time, they are trying to have more of the more market share of the organic products. So, we have to bring in more uh, agriculture product into our export portfolio. So, number of commodities, so use more than 30 commodities. Uh, agriculture products we are exporting right now. So, we have to increase the number of commodities for the export market. 
and as also for the domestic consumers. If domestic consumers want to consume organic products, if it is not available in the domestic market, they will be compared with import from outside. Importing organic products from the outside market from the abroad, so it means that losing the foreign exchange you know for this money in terms of dollar and euro we will have been investing and we will be paying for importing these products. So why not to boost our capacity to have enough organic production within the country so that we surplus we can export to many countries which are having import demand. So if the, the country developing country if they want to develop I what I see the developing countries are having very good export opportunity to export to the uh, developed country market where we can push our organic products and if you look at by default many of our farmers are organic farmers. So then in the remote areas mountainous region they are organic farmers by default by not by choice because chemicals are not accessible to them or they cannot afford chemical fertilizers, pesticide, weedicides. So they are using natural intervention to all these things and their products is more or less organic. If you can bring them under the a fold of the organic by training them in some way and, and if you are able to provide them market access. So market access can be provided by telling them what are the products which are having export demand or demand in the domestic market and what are the requirements of the processing of these products. So how these products can be processed so that they are every easily be sold as certified organic products and providing them access to the certification agencies also. So, but good thing has happened in recent times many state government uh, state governments are making provision for the certification of the organic product. This is this is good development uh, happening in India many states now so help helping certify the products of the farmers as organic. So the slowly slowly market is coming up but what I see that in countries like India there is huge potential, there is huge potential because in comparison to the very developed country our level of use of the chemicals in agriculture is already very very low, many fold lower than what is being used in the western countries in the conventional farms. So converting and switching over to organic production is much easier for the farmers in developing countries uh, like India. So we can with small small changes making them we can and then also providing them the uh, bio fertilizers, bio input alternatives in case of animal production, alternative medicines if you can uh, herbal medicines if we are doing, doing rapidly progressing on developing the alternatives to the uh, allopathic medicines in case of animals and also in case of the crops if you are making available to replace the chemical fertilizers so rapidly by the bio fertilizers and providing them more effective bio inputs which can be used in organic production. So that will be good for the our farmers and we will be able to boost the organic production in the country. Here I would like to emphasize about the alongside the organic crop products, fruits, vegetables, nuts and spices, cotton, sugar. So we have to pay attention now more on organic animal production. So we, we, we look, we see that very, very good opportunity for exporting, producing and exporting organic livestock product like milk, milk powder, cheese, butter oil, so eggs and meat. So we have to now because right now it is it is little bit lagging behind in comparison to the cereals and spices and other products. So now the livestock institutions those which are uh, responsible for livestock development, livestock, animal husbandry, animal production, these institutions pay attention, need to pay attention to organic production of the uh, milk and uh, milk, meat, eggs like that and, and their product of. So we need to improve the capacity of the farmers alongside crops, vegetables and fruits, spices and nuts. So we have to improve their capacity in production of organic milk, organic meat and organic eggs. So that require their, uh, their substantial efforts on the capacity building of the farmers in these areas which right now there is little emphasis and slowly slowly we have to develop the market for the organic uh, livestock products in the market. So thankfully now many private sector companies, so there is uh, mill companies they are, they are uh, making 
products from the organic certified organic milk products, so which are certified and that is available and they are making efforts to export these, especially these products are going to the uh, markets in UAE. So, we can we can we can we can enhance further that one. So, looking at the what uh, what uh, how the products are being ex, uh, produced livestock products uh, organically produced livestock products are being sold in the western market. We can we can get inspired from their example and we can develop our own uh, market for the organic livestock product. It is happening of course, but it is very slowly it is happening. We have to organize farmers into group just like the example of the Sundarani products in West Bengal. So, we have to see that we have to organize on the cooperative basis. So, we have to improve the capacity of the farmers by regular training and capacity development measures. So, we can improve their capacity so that they can switch over from the conventional to the organic production. If it is remunerative, it is improving the income of the farmers that is good. So, so long it is helpful to the farmers, there is no harm in uh, uh, spreading the awareness about the organic production. Many people dismiss this as idea, they feel that it is crazy idea or a gimmick or it is a fad, it is impractical idea. That is not so. If a particular group of farmers find it remunerative, it is helping them increase their income and if they are able to provide products which are healthy products, which, uh, which are uh, health products and these are safe product and this is a high quality product, consumers, consumers are having demand, there is no, no harm in promoting such a production. Uh, and by improving the capacity of the producers. Our producers need our support in terms of their capacities to be improved in this emerging area of production that what we call organic livestock production or organic production that is highly specialized area and sometimes people say it is limited to niche market for the very limited number of consumers, those who are having high affordability, they only they are eating that one. So, that is this beginning it happens with every product, every new product comes up in market, it is having a limited demand, but slowly slowly as the awareness grows up, as the income will go up, as the awareness will go up, the market will grow further for the organic products. So, we have to see that growing product and also again I, I will tell again not only we should focus on the primary product coming for from the animals like uh, milk, meat or eggs. We have to see what other products can be made from these, uh, from these uh, animal or livestock species. Say for example, from cow, cow dung comes cattle manual comes, cattle urine comes, we can make several product out of it that for the, for the which has a market, several products can be made from these and then that will boost the income of the farmers because not only milk by the associated and uh, by products from the, the, the that uh, venture can be can improve the income of the farmers. We, we have to see in what form best market can be tapped, we have to educate our farmers in that way. So, organic uh, is a growing and upcoming, it is expanding globally, there is there are a good prospects of these uh, organic products globally and also in India, we are number one producer in the world, we can also, we can also look for being number one in terms of the export in the world. So, we, we, we have uh, and we can improve the number of the commodities to be exported to not many more countries. Right now, as I told previously, we are exporting to organic product to 63 countries to only a select few countries in the Gulf. So, there is a potential of product export to the several other countries including Europe. To analyze the prospects of the export, our farmers need to be told on the domestic market, that is fine, domestic market is there, why not and there is a huge market available for the uh, export of the organically including livestock products, there is market and we can expand, we can educate production practices, we on agriculture good production practices, livestock dairying good practice uh, production practices, so all this is need through media, TV, radio program, video, YouTube videos to boost the, the skill, skill level of the production they are already doing and with the little bit of intervention, extension intervention organic production can also be enhanced. So, we have to see how we can do this. So, sooner the better, we have to make best our uh, best effort 
for the for these, these things. So, what I, I am saying here organic production is a emerging system of production which is having a good scope opportunity for the domestic market as well as export market. What I, I told you, what I discussed in this lecture, what I believe that you might have understood it well and with this, with this assumption I thank you all.